Hello all. So this is a session on creep for the material science 18ME34. So in this particular session, we are going to deal with the understanding or the basics of creep followed by different stages of creep and at the end the properties of creep. So here, so before studying creep, we have to remember few things that is a material can be subjected to any kind of loading conditions when it is being taken into account for its application. So we have studied something called as fracture, we have studied something called as fatigue here. So this is one again another type of loading condition that leads to the failure of material. So how do you define creep? So creep is defined as slow and progressive deformation of material with time at constant stress. I repeat slow and progressive deformation of material with time at constant stress means to say that you are going to feed the material with a constant load over a very long period of time that leads to deformation of material. So in order to simplify the definition or understanding of creep we can put it across like this you know a steady loading condition over a material for a very long period of time that leads to a deformation which is the dependent on the time in which the steady, steady loading condition is being considered on the material. So to be specific it is a time dependent deformation that is due to a constant loading condition which is made applied on the material over a very long period of time. So usually what happens the condition of creep is taken into account at a very high temperature range means to say that so the temperature at which the creep is going to be assessed is 0 0.4 times that of the melting temperature. So here we can just assess the you know, behavior of creep at different uh, by considering different examples here. One is the blades of turbine. So if you can just remember the working of any water turbine or gas turbine, there will be constant amount of loading condition being enforced on the member straight away from the start to the off condition. Means to say that we are going to keep the high velocity uh, by impact of uh, you know water or the gas to be fed onto the turbine blades so that the turbine keeps rotating at the constant speed that develops or generates constant power output. So in that particular case the input remains constant for a very long period of time till the operation of that particular turbine is being shut down. So that is one simple example wherein the behavior of material is subjected to constant loading condition over a period of time. So the next example goes with the furnace components. Here if we go with furnace components it is something like this you know in any furnace the temperature will be maintained at constant, constant level for a very period of very long period of time so that there is some changes which is some changes is happening in the entire processing stage so thereby what happens the entire component of the furnace will be subjected to a constant temperature so you can take the example of cupola furnace or as such wherein which there will be different ranges at which the material is going to be fed for a certain period of time the material will be heated at a particular range and thereby it will be taken to the next stage. So here what happens the material which is subjected to the heating condition is different but the component of the furnace will be subjected to constant amount of temperature irrespective of the material in which it is being material which is being placed in it. Okay, so that is one more example of furnace components that will be subjected to steady state loading condition over a period of time in the form of temperature. And the uh, next one being the timber beams of the in the roofs of building that is majorly in case of construction purpose as such when we consider the beams in the construction there will be constant amount of loading condition will be taken into account and beam will be considered for a very long life of its working uh, now in the uh, functionality of the building. So hence these are the a few simple examples that can be taken into account to assess the concept of the steady state loading condition that is nothing but the creep. Now we are going to understand different stages of creep. So here what happens, so since we are targeting a constant load here to assess the behavior of creep, so at the initial stage of loading condition over a period of material, there will definitely be a certain amount of elongation in the material. Say for example, if we take a tensile loading condition on this specimen, at the initial stage, okay, so once the load is being applied, because the load which is being applied will be constant. But straight away when we apply the load, it, it starts from the zero. So once you just start apply the load over a material, once the tensile pull is been considered and thereby what we do, we are going to keep the material under same loading condition. 
So under same loading condition, the behavior of the material changes with respect to time. That is what we are going to assess in the, the, you know, the concept of creep here. So here, to understand the different stages of creep, we are going to take the example of a material which is subjected to a tensile loading condition. So we have three different stages here to understand the creep. One is primary creep, secondary creep and tertiary creep. So here what happens, you can just observe this particular graphical representation that relates time along x-axis, strain along y-axis. So here what happens when the material is being subjected to tensile loading condition, there will be initial elongation which is being subjected onto the material due to the load applied. So that initial elongation is taken at epsilon naught that is instant elongation. Further apart what happens, the applied load remains constant. So we are not going to change any kind of load, but the same load will be kept for a very long period of time that is represented here along x-axis. So when the same load is being kept for a period of time, what is the behavior of material that leads to deformation is what we are going to describe in three stages of creep here, primary creep, secondary creep and tertiary creep. So here what happens after the instant elongation, whatever the behavior of material that is subjected to this change in length that is strain over a period of time is defined under primary creep or the first stage of creep here. So here what happens there will be a decreasing amount of variation in the strain. So you can observe the you know uh, the uh, diagram in the representation here. So this particular goes with the decreasing in the rate, decrease rate of strain as and when it has been considered. So to an extent there will always be you know uh, the primary creep at the start. Later what happens when the load is being kept constant for further amount of period of time at that particular point of time the strain rate will be common, will be kept normal means to say that we get a straight line of representation to a particular extent that is with respect to time. So there in way what happens is that we are going to get the slope which represents the minimum creep rate in the secondary stage wherein the strain rate is directly proportional with respect to time wherein which the load is being considered. Means to say that the strain hardening and recovery effect what we generally define in terms of materials behavior. So that will be balanced here means to say that whatever the elongation in which the material is being considered the recovery stage will also be at the same rate. So means to, that is the both strain hardening and recovery effect will accomplish the concept of keeping this lean behavior of the strain rate and that stage we define it as the secondary stage of creep. Further increase in the time for the same loading condition, the strain rate gradually increases like anything so that it leads the material to fracture. So you can just observe the figure here. So this is the sudden increase in the strain rate. So here it is decrease normal and here it is increasing in the tertiary creep. So I mean the uh, third stage of creep is tertiary creep and at the end it leads to fracture. So here we have represented the dotted line uh, which is along the normal of the secondary creep here wherein if it has to be extended the fracture leads at this particular strain. But since the material has been subjected to the tertiary stage wherein which the increase in the strain rate is more the material has fractured in the position called as A here. So this is the different stages of creep wherein which a material will be subjected to a constant load condition along a particular period of time. Moving on to the last part, it is the properties. So just like the properties of fracture and fatigue here, we have to understand the properties of creep. So because these are the parameters which assist us in <coughs> defining or assessing the behavior of creep. So first one goes with the creep strength. How do we define creep strength? It is the highest stress that a material can withstand without excessive deformation for a specified length of time means to say that here it is the capacity of a material to go with the creep without fracture okay so to withstand without excessive deformation for a specified length of time means to say that as the definition itself of the creep is going with with respect to time that is time dependent deformation the capacity of a material or the stress corresponding to a material that leads to withstanding the same load is what is defined as creep strength. It is also called as creep limit. So next definition goes with creep rupture strength. 
so it is the highest stress the material can withstand without rupture for a specified length of time means to say that to an extent the material starts behaving in the same uh, pattern once it reaches to a stage wherein there is a rupture identified that particular till that particular point we are going to consider it as the creep rupture strength so it is again the corresponding stress parameter that is going to be measured so to bring the relationship between the creep strength or to the rupture strength we'll take up the example like this say for example there is a turbine which is running at 10000 rpm for a period of 800 hours okay so let us take this instant for the understanding purpose so if we have a turbine that is rotating at a speed of 10,000 rpm for 800 hours okay so in that how we define the creep strength and creep rupture strength so if the same turbine if it results in only 0.2 percentage of creep without fracture okay so without fracture if the if the material is resulting say x percentage of creep say for example 0.2 percentage of creep when it is been running for 800 hours and that too with the speed of 10,000 rpm that is where the correspondent stress is considered as creep strength whereas for the same material which is running at you know 10,000 rpm for a period of 800 hours if it leads to the initiation of rupture or you know, crack that instant of time wherein the rupture is being initiated the correspondent stress is called as creep rupture strength so this is something regarding creep strength and creep rupture strength so what is the next parameter the next parameter is called as creep life so it is the time to fracture under given static load condition so it is the total duration that results in the fracture of a material wherein which the material is subjected to static loading or the constant loading condition so here in this particular you know graph the correspondence you now the time wherein the fracture is being initiated so that particular time can be taken as the creep life so this is something on creep now let us study the concepts called as stress relaxation and fracture toughness see each and every material will be subjected to a particular loading condition so we are going to assess the behavior of material or define certain parameters related to the corresponding stress in which the material is being loaded so we do have different you know uh, platforms wherein the material is considered so it may be in the plastic limit or it may be in the elastic limit maybe the material subjected to fracture material subjected to uh, fatigue type of loading material subjected to creep type of creep, creep type of loading as such so whatever may be the condition so we do have something called as you know the restrictions wherein which the material will be considered with so considering that restriction we are going to define the parameter called as stress relaxation so how do you define stress so the definition of stress is that it is the time dependent decrease in the stress acting on a body which is constrained to fixed deformation so i repeat it is the time dependent decrease in stress acting on a body which is constrained to fixed deformation so let us say you know let us make it very simple by taking the example called as bolt so what we do here is that when we speak on the corresponding stress which doesn't allow the material to elongate that is the change in length is restricted strain is restricted so corresponding to that particular stress we are going to consider it as the stress relaxation factor so it can be put it across you know in a simple fashion like this it is the reduction in the value of stress in components that are not allowed to elongate that is if the specimen is restricted to elongate based on the loading condition so that particular correspondent you know the reduction value in the stress that is due to the not allowing of the elongation of material that is considered to be stress relaxation so uh, the best example as already said it is the bolt here once you fix the bolt to a particular material say for example a nut so once you start applying the load if the elong elong elongation itself is restricted so this there will be reduction in the stress and that reduction is called as stress relaxation so moving on to the next one of the important topic here it is concept of fracture toughness see whatever the material we select for a particular application or however we develop a material 100 percent pure material formation is highly impossible there will always be a space for 
at you know at the initiation for a crack or there will be something flaws in the material combination or there will be something you know there will be a presence of the discontinuity in the material so after considering all these things we are going to first understand the fracture behavior of a material because the material has to withstand a particular load for a very long period of time so thereby what happens we are going to I know uh, the focus on a topic called as the fracture toughness. How do you define fracture toughness? It is the critical value of strain energy release rate that is represented as G which makes the crack propagate to fracture it means to say that the material will definitely do have certain amount of loss or discontinuities maybe in the form of crack or anything or any type of dislocation. So what is that particular dislocation that is leading to the concept called as fracture. So what is the strain okay the critical value that leads the you know the in available crack in the material to fracture is called as fracture toughness in a, in a simple word we can put the same term of fracture toughness like this it is the fracture resistance of material in the presence of crack or discontinuity so what is the resistance wherein a material can lead to the fracture when the material itself do possess the you know availability of crack or discontinuities so that is the concept of fracture toughness we have studied the concept of stress relaxation and the fracture toughness. Here in the syllabus we have to solve the numericals on concept of stress relaxation. So before solving the numericals directly let us go with the derivation of the stress relaxation factor based on the definition. So to derive at a relationship to identify the stress relaxation factor here. So we are supposed to consider a tensile specimen which is subjected to a constant initial load sigma i at elevated temperature. So what happens when the temperature at an elevated temperature when we have considered a specimen which is subjected to tensile loading condition the initial stress what we will be accounting will be taken as sigma i. So the total strain of the specimen will be given by epsilon is equal to epsilon e plus epsilon p where epsilon e is elastic strain epsilon p becomes plastic or creep strain. So therefore we know the you know the strain uh, along the elastic limit could be defined using the concept of Inks modulus here which may be taken as sigma by E. So substituting that we will be getting the equation number 2 as epsilon is equal to sigma by E plus epsilon P. So here what happens when the stress relaxation factor is taken into account it is subjective to a type of loading called as creep. So due to creep specimen tries to increase in length but if it is constrained at its two ends that is how we are going to define the concept of stress relaxation. So when the material is subjected to creep and thereby when it is trying to increase in its length but whereas the, it is constrained on both the sides at that particular point of time the total strain remains constant at any point of time means to say that the strain remains constant. Thus we can represent the same like this that is derivative of epsilon with respect to time is equal to 0. So since we know the total strain is derived by the elastic strain and plastic strain so we are going to substitute the value of epsilon is equal to epsilon e plus epsilon p and since it remains constant throughout it is equated to 0. Hence the equation when we converted as derivative of epsilon e that is elastic strain with respect to time is equal to minus of plastic strain with respect to time. So here what happens we know that the elastic limit you know, is considered to be sigma by E whereas the plastic strain is considered to be B into sigma times of I mean B times of sigma to the power of n. So here what we are trying to say is that in the plastic strain you know, you know in the plastic limit the plastic strain deals with two constant B and n whereas n should always be greater than 1 and sigma is stress E is Young's modulus. So using this particular values in equation 3 so what we get is that derivative of you know sigma by E with respect to time is equal to the entire thing you know the derivative of plastic strain with respect to time b times of sigma to the power of n since we have minus n here it becomes minus b into sigma times of n. So in order to know further going with uh, the you know simplification with respect to consideration of con constants here so we'll take the epsilon out that is Young's modulus out uh, derivative of you know sigma with respect to time leads with the b times of sigma to the power of n in its uh, uh, no, the next phase. 
So here what happens to understand the behavior of sigma now, what we will do is we are going to take the integration on both the sides that leads to the equation, you know, 1 by e derivative of, you know, integration of sigma by with respect to time plus, you know, is equal to minus times of b into integration of sigma to the power of n. So further, you know, uh, going with the simplification, so we are going to pull the sigma on one particular side and lead other th parameters to the right side. So we will get, uh, now the equation integration of sigma with respect to sigma to the power of n is equal to minus b e is taken to the right again for the purpose of simplification and the integration of dt. So finally the derivation uh, the integration factor for this leads to minus 1 time 1 minus 1 divided by n minus 1 times of sigma to the power of n minus 1 is equal to b constant e constant dt integration of dt leads to t plus the constant in the equation. So that is where the equation 4 is derived. So here what happens, we have to identify the parameter called as C that is constant. To derive that particular stage, we are going to consider the initial stage of consideration that T is equal to 0 and sigma is taken to be sigma i because at the initial stress what the condition is being defined to identify the stress relaxation factor. So thereby what happens in equation 4 if we just substitute the value of t is equal to 0 the entire thing goes off. Similarly sigma is represented by sigma i here. So hence the equation of c will be equal to minus 1 times of minus 1 divided by n minus 1 times of sigma i to the power of n minus 1. So now what we have is we have the value of c here to have the substitution in value of 4. So thereby what we do using the value of c that is equation 5 in 4 at the final simplification factor we are going to get okay 1 by sigma times of n minus 1 is equal to b e n minus 1 t plus 1 by sigma i into to the power of n minus 1. See here since n minus 1 is identified at you know left hand side as well as to the value of c once it is substituted what we are going to do is we are going to multiply the entire equation by n minus 1 it is basic mathematical calculations what we do here hence what happens n minus 1 will be you know removed in the left hand side as well as at the value of c here upon simplification hence it is you know n minus 1 is received on the right hand side of the first factor and since we have the minus on all the three essence here so all the minus will get converted into plus at the final so this is the simplified equation to identify the stress relaxation factor now let us take the numerical on stress relaxation so the question goes like this a steel bolt clamping two rigid plates together is held at 600 degree celsius with initial tightening stress 75 mega pascal. See here in this first, first line itself in the numerical, you can identify that there is a material being subjected to loading condition, but the movement is constrained. Here it is clamping two rigid plates together held at 600 degrees Celsius means to say that 600 degrees Celsius becomes the elevated temperature. So tightening initial tightening stress 75 mega pascal means to say that it is sigma i. The minimum creep rate is 2.8 to the 2.8 into 10 to the power of minus 8 minutes meter per minutes per hour. That is the standard for creep rate at a stress of 30 mega pascal. Means to say that this creep rate is identified at the stress of 30 mega pascal. Determine the stress remaining after one year in the steel bolt. Means to say that the same type of loading condition is considered for one year duration. And after one year, what is the condition of you know? Uh, the stress uh, on the steel bolt is to be considered while n is to be taken as 3 and x model as e is given to be 2 into 10 to the power of you know, 5 mega pascal. So taking all those given contents here, so sigma i is given, creep rate is given and the corresponding stress for this creep rate at 30 mega pascal is given, x model as is given, n is given, time is given that is 1 year, so 1 year is 365 days. 8760 hours so we are supposed to identify the value of b and sigma which are the constant see here we are going to identify sigma as the main factor after a so long period of time 
but to identify the value of sigma in the equation what we have derived for stress relaxation factor we need the value of b so out of the given data here we don't find any b here so first we are going to identify b and using the value of b we are going to get the value of sigma that is stress after one year according to the numerical so observe the figure here this is one particular raw data which has been considered even in you know the derivation factor that is derivative of plastic strain with respect to time is equal to b times of b times of sigma to the power of n so taking on log, log on both the sides okay so we are going to get log of you know derivative of the plastic strain along with respect to time is equal to this is you know simplified log b plus n log sigma here so it is again a basic mathematical calculations or application of the you know simplification factors here so we have the value of the creep rate that is 2.8 to the power of minus 8 we we don't know the value of b here whereas we the value of n is given 3 and corresponding stress at which creep rate is identified is sigma that is sigma 30 megapascal so upon simplification going with all the calculation and taking anti log here to identify the value of log b while we have log b here so applying the anti log principle the value of b will be getting us 10 to the power of minus 12 so you have to practice the you know calculation using your calculators i have taken the complete you know uh, the simplified pattern here so use your calculators and get the solution verified okay so now i have the value of b I have the value of B, I have the value of E, I have the value of N, I know the value of T. So using every constants here, I can get the value of sigma. Keep in mind, sigma I is the initial stress what it has been given, that is 75 megapascal. Whereas this sigma is corresponding to the creep rate only. It is not the final sigma what we are supposed to get after one year of time. So substituting all the values here upon simplification, the value of sigma that represents the stress remaining on the bolt after one hour is identified to be 16.89 mega pascal. So again, I repeat, use calculators and get the values verified. In this particular module, along with the numericals on stress relaxation, so though we have studied the concept of stress, strain and all in module 1, the problems are being included in module 2. So for the purpose of you know, completion of syllabus. So we have taken few of the numericals related to stress and strain, strain here along with stress relaxation factor. So this is completely relevant to what we have studied in module 1. So you have to recall few of the concepts what we have studied in module 1 to go with the numericals. Along with this we have one more pattern of numericals on diffusion again which is dependent on module 1. But we are going with the content as it has been mentioned in syllabus 2 here. Okay, so let us take two problems for the purpose of understanding we have taken only two and few more cases of problems are being given in the form of notes for your reference. So the first one goes with the complete study on the engineering stress, true stress, engineering strain and true strain. So we have to remember all the definitions once we go with these type of problems. So here a 12.5 millimeter diameter aluminum alloy test bar is subjected to a load of 2 tons. If the dia of the bar is 12.4 millimeter at this load, calculate sigma that is engineering stress, true stress, engineering strain, true strain. Okay. So since 12.5 mm diameter is the initial, see whenever we consider a load being applied on a, you know, a specimen, the diameter reduces with the increase in the length. So this is what happens when we go with the application of tensile loading condition. So what happens? The initial diameter is 12.5. Using that we are going to calculate the initial area of the specimen that is pi d square by 4. That is since it is initial it is d naught d naught square by 4. So we have the value of 122.71 millimeters square. So similarly the uh, now the initial dia when the load is being applied means to say that when a 12.5 millimeter diameter specimen is being applied with 2 ton of load then the diameter is considered at that instant to be 12.4 that is immediate decrement in the value of the diameter is considered as 12.4 millimeter dia. So using that we are going to take the initial area of the specimen that is pi into di square by 4 we get with the substitution we get 120.76 millimeter square. So 
load is been given 2 ton we are always supposed to take load in the form of newton here so 2 ton is 2000 kg multiplied by 9.81 we get 19620 newton which is to be the standard unit of load which is to be considered to identify the value it is direct substitution so sigma that is engineering stress is p by a naught substitute the value direct substitution we get the value 159.88 newton per millimeter square then sigma dash that is in true stress that is with respect to stress at that instant of moment that is p by a1 so a1 is or a1 or ai is known for us here so substituting that we are going to get 162.47 newton per millimeter square similarly change in length by original length that is strain so we don't have any value for length mentioned here so what we do is we are going to relate the factor what we have studied when it comes to length and area when it comes to the concept of you know the strain so that is li minus l0 by l0 is the length uh, factor whereas if we take it in terms of area it is a0 minus ai by a0 is the factor so since we have the value of a0 and ai here so we are going to get the value of the engineering strain to be 0.016 how about true strain so true strain is represented by epsilon dash is equal to ln of 1 plus epsilon so epsilon is known here that is 0.016 so ln of 1 plus 0.016 gives me the value of true strain that is 0.0158 so it is direct substitution only thing is that we have to concentrate on conversion of load in terms of newton and we have to substitute the exact value for the exact consideration similarly we have taken one more case here so it is on the fracture of a material so a copper rod of initial diameter 2 millimeter fractures at a load of 110 kg its ductility is 75 percent reduction in area calculate the true stress at fracture so means to say that we are supposed to calculate the stress at fracture that is sigma dash is equal to pf by af so sigma dash is the true stress and pf by af is becoming the you know the concept of the load and area at fracture which is to be considered see here initial diameter is given 2 millimeter so initial area we get 3.14 millimeter square by substitution and percentage area of reduction that is a0 minus ai by a0 is given 75 percent so it becomes 0.75 load is given 110 kg so 110 kg we have taken so when you are using the value of p you have to convert it into newton here so we have to identify the value of pf by af here so we have the value of pf but we don't know the value of af so af is the area at fracture so since we are taking area at the next stage wherein the fracture is being initiated ai or a1 what we take here leads to be af so that is where we are going to identify here so we know you know to find the area at fracture a0 minus ai by a0 is given that is 0.75 upon substitution for making it very simple it becomes ai is equal to a naught minus of 0.75 times of a naught that is ai is equal to 0.25 times of a naught okay so substituting the same we are going to get the value of ai is equal to 0.785 millimeter square so since the area at that instant itself is the area of fracture of consideration so we are going to take ai is equal to af here so again we know the value of pf that is 110 kg in terms of newton multiplied by 9.81 divided by af is known 0.785 millimeter square if you substitute it you will get the value of sigma dash that is true stress at fracture 1374.64 newton per millimeter square see whatever numerical we solve here it is a direct substitution only thing we have to concentrate is on the standard units to solve the problem on diffusion so we have to remember this particular concept so that is to get the numericals on diffusion the variation of diffusion coefficient with temperature is given by Arrhenius equation so whenever we get the solution or whenever we get to go with the numericals on diffusion it is basically on the Arrhenius equation what we are going to solve so Arrhenius equation states that d that is diffusion coefficient is equal to a into e to the power of minus e a divided by rt where d is diffusion coefficient a is the frequency factor e a is the activation energy r is the universal gas constant t is the absolute temperature okay so along the consideration of this we have taken one simple numerical to establish the concept of diffusion coefficient here so later we will be giving you you know uh, more number of numericals for the experiment i mean uh, for the exercise purpose okay
okay. So, one of, the, one of the such kind of problem is that, so calculate the diffusion rate of carbon in iron at 700 degrees Celsius assuming the constant A is equal to that is frequency factor is equal to 4.9 into 10 to the power of minus 5 meter square per second and activation energy is equal to 153.2 kilojoule per mole. When substituting the value keep in mind, so we have to take this in Fahrenheit that is 700 degrees Celsius plus 273 while kilojoule should be taken in terms of joules that is multiplied by 1000. We know universal gas constant is 8.314. So in order to get or derive the value of D here. To make it simple, we are going to take the LAN on both the sides of Arrhenius equation. So, upon consideration, it is LAN of D is equal to LAN A. Since it is exponential form, it directly gets the minus value of the entire factor here. That is LAN A minus of activation energy divided by universal gas constant into absolute temperature. So, substitute the entire value here once upon substitution of the exact value. See here. So, 153.2 kilojoule per mole was the given data, we have to take it in joules, hence we have multiplied by 1000 and here again 700 plus 273 to keep it in constant with the equation factor, okay. So, at the end the value of D that is diffusion rate or diffusion coefficient is identified to be 2.859 into 10 raised to minus 3 meter square per second. So, please use the calculators to solve the numericals and verify the answer, thank you.